In one of my previous videos on how to make a kimono jacket with bell sleeve, I showed you guys the drafting and cutting of the whole process and I ended the video on a note that I'll be putting all the pieces together to make a beautiful kimono jacket and also concentrate on the sleeve part of the style in a new video. In case you missed this video on how to draft and cut a kimono jacket using this image as a reference point, kindly go back to my channel and check out the video after watching this very one. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, this is Reggae School of Fashion. In today's video, I will be showing you how to draft a bell sleeve without joining using slash and spread method of that manipulation. Please consider to subscribe if you haven't. Also like and share this video with your friends and soulmates. My name is Balaji and this is Reggae School of Fashion. In drafting a bell sleeve, a bell sleeve can be achieved in two ways. The first method is by drafting a basic sleeve separately and drafting a circular sleeve, then later join the two together. And the second method is having a bell sleeve as a single piece. And this can be achieved using slash and spread method of that manipulation. And this will be our area of concentration in this video based on our reference image. Based on this image, the, the sleeve is a bell sleeve. There is no joining in between the basic sleeve and the flare at the lower part of the sleeve. So that is why we'll be applying a dust manipulation on the sleeve. So when drafting your bell sleeve, you need a basic sleeve pattern. You should have drafted your basic sleeve pattern already. So if you don't know how to draft a basic sleeve pattern, or you have been drafting your basic sleeve pattern wrongly, I have a full tutorial on how to draft a basic sleeve pattern. I have a well detailed video which will explain how you can construct the sleeve edge, the M line connection of the two, how you can adjust the value you have on the front and the back ammo. The difference you have between the front and the back ammo because the front ammo is different from the back ammo. They are not the same. The same thing is applied on the bodies as well. So the video is in details and I will link the video up in the description box under this video. So what I will be doing now is to transfer this pattern on a fresh pattern paper. Looking at her reference image, you will notice we have three measurements on the sleeve. So this is the first one, which is the head of the sleeve. And the second one is where the fitness, a basic sleeve stops. So you have to note the measurement as well. Then another measurement is the hem line. That is where the sleeve flare stops. So this measurement, which is where the flare starts, is where I will stop drafting. That is where I will stop transferring my pattern. So I will be transferring the basic sleeve pattern from the sleeve head and stop on this level. Again, this point is where the flare starts. From the sleeve head to the point where the flare starts. Now I've transferred my basic sleeve pattern up to this point. Then I will come to the original pattern, draw out a straight line on that point. That is the point where the flare starts based on our reference image. Then I will cut out that area. Can you see what I have here is what I have on my fresh pattern paper. They are the same. So this is what I will be using in creating the flare. So when you are creating a flare on your sleeve, the first thing you need to decide is how much fabric you are using. So this is determined by how much the flare will be. Or this is the amount of flare I want. It can be the one that will determine the, yeah, the amount of fabrics you will be using. So let's assume for this sleeve I want to use like half, half yard of fabric. So that is what I'll be dividing in spreading my pattern. Or I just want to spread my pattern. Any amount of fabric that will occupy is okay for me. So now I will be slashing this pattern. This is the M line of the sleeve pattern. So I will take that measurement. 
I'm taking the measurements. What I have is 9.5. So 9.5. Then I will spread it by. I will divide it as much as I can. I'm using one, one inch because I really want the flare to full. So I'm dividing it by one inch because I really want the flare to be in full. So then I'll be connecting this point up to the upper part of the pattern. Okay, this is the last one. Then I will take my scissors and slash on the lines. That is why it is called slash and spread. So after slashing, I will count the number of pieces I have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10. Let's assume I'm using half yard of fabric. That is 18 inches. So I will divide 18 by 10. Whatever I have is what I will be using in spreading this pattern. So but if I don't mind, I can decide to spread each layer with 2, 2 inches. Now I've numbered all the pieces and I have 10 pieces in total. So I will be spreading each piece with two inches. So I will start with number one. And secure it with paper tape. So from the edge of number one, I will measure two inches inward. Then pick number two. Place the hedge of number two pieces on the hedge of the number one. So making sure the pieces is facing the direction of the two inches points. Okay. So from this point as well, I will measure two inches. So then I will pick my third pieces, which is number three. I will make sure the edges overlap. A little, not really overlap, but the edges must touch each other. So now we make sure the pattern, the pieces is facing the direction of two inches. Okay. So from this edge as well, I will measure another two inches forward. Then I will pick my number four. So this is the hedge, this, this is a two inches point. So then I'll come to the edge of number four inch insert same two inches so i'm spreading each pieces with two inches so
So I'm spreading with two inches. You can see I'm having a curvy shape already like a circle. So the next one is number six. So I will be placing the last one, which is the tent, the tent pieces. So this is the tent pieces. Okay, so the spreading is complete now. My flare is from this point, from this point all around to this point. So what I have in between here are not part of my measurement, so which I will be ruling out. So this is almost like a full circle. And I will note the measurement I have from this point to this point. So I have one and a half inches. Then take my ruler to complete the circle. Like so. After completing this circle, then I'll come to the lower part and connect all the edges together. So after connecting the edges together, this is what we have. Then I will be connecting the remaining broken points together. Okay, then I will cut out the pattern. Now I'm folding my pattern into two so that I can cut out the center. And I'll open it up again. Continue cutting. So after cutting out the center, I will open up one side of the pattern. So 
So this is not part of the pattern I said it before. I just cut it out together. So I'll be removing this. No. After cutting, this is what I have. I have it as a round shape. Then I will fold it into two again. I will fold it. Then open it up. So which means I'm cutting this into two. So this is the flare I cut out. So I have it in two pieces now. So I will be placing the first one on one side and the second one on the other side. So this is half, this is half, like so. So this is number one pointing at this edge and this is number 10 pointing on the other edge. So and I'll bring it closer onto the two edges meet. Okay. Okay, we are good. So then I will secure the two edges together with my tape. So as you can see, there's a broken point here. So I will just refix this by reconstructing the circle. So the pattern is ready for cutting. If you don't want your belt sleeve to be as full as this, you can spread it by one inch. Another thing you can do is you will not slash your pattern up to 10 pieces. You can slash it into six or eight, then spread by one, one inch. It will not be as full as this. But the most important is the amount of fabric you are using. You have to do your calculation first before you spread. And if you want yours fuller than this, all you need to do is spread more than two inches. Then you will have it fuller. So the pattern is ready. So the next step is to cut it out. Now I will be adding my seam allowance all around the pattern and I will cut it out. Now I'm done adding seam allowance to my pattern and my pattern is ready for cutting. So guys, this is the final look of our pattern. This is a bell sleeve without joining. The joining has been done on our pattern paper. So the next step is to take this and cut out on my fabric. So I'll be turning it with lining. So which means I will cut out fabric and lining together. And the length of my lining will be one inch shorter than the length of the fabric. This is the final output of our kimono jacket with bell sleeve as you can see on the mannequin. We have the center front opening, which you can replicate based on your own preference. But please note, whatever value you are subtracting from the center front should be divided by two in order to get the desired result. And this is the sleeve part of the style. It is a bell sleeve without joining, as you can see. It is a single piece of pattern and it is looking beautiful. So guys, that is all on how to make a bell sleeve without joining. Till we meet next time when I will be dropping another video. Always remember, there is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs.